a vital role lies ahead for the Australian Pastures Gene Bank. The timer was set for the creation of a centralised gene bank for pasture species when a recommendation was made in 2006 to establish a National Genetics Resources Centre. With state and federal government cooperation, an investment by five R&D corporations, including GRDC, the Australian Grains Gene Bank and now the Australian Pastures Gene Bank were launched. The two centres will, uh, I guess, are complementary in, the, in their activities. Um, we are part of a, a national effort, I guess, into look at conserving genetic resources of importance to Australia. Um, but we're also, I guess, all part of a global system as well. Based in Adelaide, the APG will add to its existing collection of lucens and medics. From the west, there'll be clovers, cerradellas, and bicerulas. From the north, tropical pasture species. And from the southern states, temperate grasses and a range of lotus, native grasses and clovers. As state collections arrive, they'll be processed and duplications and surplus seed stored in reserve cold rooms. This seed will supplement germplasm supplied to researchers and plant breeders. In preparation for storage, seed is cleaned, dried to 5% moisture content and sealed in foil packs. At minus 20 degrees C, the seed can remain viable for up to 100 years. When all state collections have been received and processed, it's expected 70,000 varieties, representing 2,000 species, will be stored in this gene bank. At capacity, its main cold room will hold up to 120,000 varieties. It's a really important resource for agriculture to remain competitive and also to adapt to whatever challenges, I guess, the future may bring. It's been collected by Australian scientists over the last 60 years. Um, and so that, that material is not held anywhere else in the world. So not only is it going to be of significant value to Australia, it will be of international significance. Everything about the genetic material will be documented. The quantity of the seed, its quality, GPS coordinates of where it was collected, the altitude, soil type, as well as plant characteristics such as growth habit, flowering time and nutritive values. Seed viability will also be routinely checked and when necessary propagated to produce fresh seed stock for storage. Providing germplasm and documented data will be a major benefit provided by the gene bank. Another will be its return on investment. The benefit cost analysis originally done for the proposed National Genetic Resources Centre calculated the benefit cost ratio as 119 to 1. Economically, it's, I guess it's probably important to, that the producers recognise that this is almost like an insurance policy for the future of their industry. So the, the investment that they are contributing to in the maintenance and the ongoing, I guess, um, operations of these centres is allowing breeders to uh, uh, continually to produce products that will allow them to remain competitive in the future. It's insurance on a global level as well, as Australia is a signatory to the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. Its objective is the conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, and that means global food security. Under the treaty, germplasm from the Australian Pastures Gene Bank and the Australian Grains Gene Bank will be freely provided to the international plant breeding and research community.